Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a Junt or Black Red Green mid-range deck featuring some of the best cards in standard in their respective colors, and it's essentially a red-black mid-range deck splashing a few green cards, and the main reason is for a Seekas Chariot, the powerful 4-mana legendary vehicle, making a pair of cat tokens, and when we attack with a chariot we can copy one of our tokens as well, and those include cat tokens, as well as maybe the Goblin Shaman tokens from Fable of the Mirror, Breaker, a great card in and of itself, and then we also have some clue tokens from the Tracker, which synergizes with other tokens as a nice 4-3 that can provide a bit of card advantage basically, so another nice green card to splash in this deck as it can individually crew an Asika's Chariot, so great there as well. And then we're also splashing for Unleash the Inferno, and this is one of the few clean answers to an opposing Fable of the Mirror Breaker, as we can take out the Shaman token as well as the enchantment itself with the remaining damage, and there's plenty of other artifacts and enchantments in standard that this can potentially take out. And then looking through the rest of our deck, we've got some of the usual suspects. Harvester, a great card to maybe copy with the Reflection of Kiki-Jiki to take out creatures over and over again. Underdog, something we don't mind trading off early. And then in a late game, Blitz provides a nice advantage. And we can also sacrifice both two mana creatures to set up a turn three casualty with Obnixilus, so it enters with more loyalty. And we can make more devils to make the opponent discard and drain them as well. And then Valky can be played at 2 mana, or we can wait until we get to 7 mana for a Tybalt. So whenever you're playing with Tybalt, it's a good idea to include some sideboard lessons. And then we have another Planeswalker in Spider Queen, can make a pair of Spider Tokens, can provide card advantage. Plenty of creatures end up dying in this deck, so we get more loyalty to make a fresh batch of Spider Tokens. Then we've got a bit of spot removal, full set of Voltage Surge, and we have quite a few artifacts to potentially sacrifice to it between the Blood Tokens, Clue Tokens from Tracker, and Treasure Tokens from the Shaman Token. And then we also have Power Word Kill, and we're playing this over Infernal Grasp just because the red-white aggro deck is quite popular. No angels, demons, or dragons in that deck that we care about. But on the other hand, if we face one of the black-white angel decks or maybe a gold span dragon, Power Word Kill does have a few limitations, so that's always a difficult choice to make. And then I think we've covered most of it. We've got a few X spells with Meat Hook Massacre. Powerful Sweeper, of course, can help us against some of the aggressive Go White creature decks. And Shatter Skull Smashing can be a land or an extra removal spell. Otherwise, we've got plenty of lands, including Hive as an extra creature land. Great at exiling opposing recursive threats, like maybe copies of Underdog. And then, of course, we've got our Proving Ground, plenty of dual lands with all 12 of the pathways in our colors, and a few of the dual lands from Innistrad as well. And then a few basics in case we run up against an opposing Field of Ruin, or maybe the Cleansing Wildfire as well nowadays. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's missing a 2-drop or cheap interaction, but I think the start of Tracker into Chariot to maybe even copy of Nixilis is too good to pass up. But could definitely get run over here, missing a 1 or 2 mana play. Play Proving Ground. Opponent does seem to be holding a 1 mana instant, could be a play with fire, which could mean we're up against the Boros Agra deck, which is... Not ideal, given this start. Alright, no play, that's good. And do we want to play a tapped smashing now is the question. And we'll be tapping out for the next two turns. Tracker, presumably, into Chariot. So do I have time for smashing? Maybe turn 5 we could cast it. Although we're most likely going for Nixilis, so it's gonna be a while. And I could see myself wanting the untapped land. So I'll go for the tapped smashing here, but close call. Another play with fire, better than a haste creature attacking us repeatedly. And there's a white mana. Do we see a cavalier perhaps, or do they have a more removal heavy hand with Brutal Cathar? It's gonna be hopeful initiate. So I have to imagine they have a Brutal Cathar in hand. And a Royal Eruption, so a lot of burn. Voltage Surge, not a bad answer to initiate. 
I think I still prefer Tracker, then our opponent will exile it, and then Voltage Surge deals with the Brutal Cathar and makes another token. Although it's tempting to just want to play Chariot next turn. I think Tracker's still fine. Gives us a blocker if they were to just play a Hasty Cavalier. And there's Brutal Cathar, as we suspected. So now the question is, Voltage Surge plus Obnixilus, or do we just play Chariot? It's not like the Brutal Cathar is going to have a good attack to train Initiate into our Asika's Chariot next turn. And then we can maybe copy Obnixilus with a Chariot, so that seems more exciting. And they're still pretty far from having two plus one counters to activate the Initiate to maybe destroy Chariot, which would be another concern. And it feels better than exiling a Tracker than exiling a Cat token for free. So I think the sequencing lined up fine. And we were lucky our opponent didn't have a cheaper haste creature. Royal Eruption means we'll have to crew here to make a 4-4 blocker. And I don't think we'll see any attacks. Okay. So step one, Voltage Surge, Brutal Cathar. Get our tracker back, make another clue token, crew chariots. And then we want extra red mana, probably. I was going to play Obnixilus with casualty, sacrificing a four-powered creature. So it would have entered with a ton of loyalty. We can make devils, start draining the opponent to gain more life, potentially, and take over from there. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn one Proving Ground, and then we can choose between Harvester or Underdog. And a bit of removal to back those up. Facing Mono Black. Okay, I guess Underdog is probably the preferred choice. And then get some more black mana flowing. Don't really care as much if Underdog dies compared to Harvester. Tracker's a nice draw. So we'll get in for three. And then Unleash the Inferno might end up taking out a treasure token. As our points get to turn to dispute. Opponent grabs confront the pass, so we could see a planeswalker next turn. It's gonna be another eye twitch for now. Okay. So step one attack. Unless we want a Voltage Surge Eye Twitch, although they likely have another Deadly Dispute. I probably don't want to overextend with Harvester into a Sweeper. So I think the options really are, do we want to unleash? Although for opponent sacrifices Eye Twitch, I don't think we get to take out any artifact with it afterwards. So that doesn't seem great. So I think we just attack instead of trying to Voltage Surge. And then probably end up sacrificing the clue token, play a tapped hive. That seems acceptable. Voltage Surge could essentially represent 4 damage if we take out Eye Twitch. Don't think that's necessarily worth it. Want to keep this to take out a Planeswalker. So there's another Dispute. And then we can always make more tokens to enable Tracker through Harvester. So I'm not too concerned about sacrificing our clue. And then now we have a creature land, which can also mess with the opponent's graveyard to maybe nerf Confronta Past. So There's going to be a Pest Summoning to buy more time until they can start sweeping. And a Shambling Ghast, sure. Let's see what we draw. Fable's not bad. Could also enable Tracker and Smashing. So Smashing could take out two of the opponent's creatures here, but I don't think we necessarily want to go down that path. If we animate Hive, our opponent could double block and finish it off with Shambling Ghast. It's not too appealing. I think going for Fable is fine, and then we can maybe blow up a double block with Voltage Surge, but most likely opponent is just going to chump a bunch. 
Okay, double block so they can maybe finish off Tracker here. Do I want a Voltage Surge? We do still have Unleash and Shatter to maybe get rid of a Planeswalker. Although we're most likely going to see a Sweeper here. So I think just letting damage happen is fine. Don't want to waste my Voltage Surge. And then I don't think the three damage is going to be all that relevant. Although opponent killing Tracker maybe means they don't have a Sweeper here, who knows. If they don't, I could go for Harvester. They could easily both Blood on the Snow or go for a Meat Hook Massacre to wipe the board. So yeah, not sure what to make of this. Maybe I should just go for Harvester anyway to keep up the pressure. Sure. And then we still have Hive and Blitz to keep at it. Uh -huh. Invoke Despair. So we can sacrifice probably Underdog as our creature, this as our enchantments, and then take two. So glad we committed the extra creature to the board. Opponents got their own Underdog. And then now Voltage Surge plus Blitz Underdog seems fine. Uh, could also take three. That way we can Voltage Surge Underdog and then exile it with Hive which may also be worth it. All their opponents behind on life after we attack here. So I don't know if they're going to be blitzing underdog anytime soon, so maybe that can wait. And we would rather draw the extra card. I guess thanks to the treasure we don't even need to play this, and we can just go for a hive anyway. Right, I think I'm still probably fine with underdog. Blitz. Surge Underdog, attack, and play a tapped Hive. So now we have multiple creature lands to keep up the pressure. And another Voltage Surge is nice. Time for Blood on the Snow at long last. Can bring back maybe an eye twitch. Goes for underdog anyway. Alright, can untap first. And then I'm thinking voltage surge. And then hive exiles underdog. Although once again, I'm not too worried about the opponent blitzing underdog, so maybe it's fine to just blitz my own to get the extra card. And then do I even bother using Voltage Surge? Or do we just keep it for later and try and get our card out of the Underdog first and trade some damage? Yeah, tricky spot here. I think, again, since we have Unleash, we can answer Planeswalkers, so let's just get rid of the Underdog now. And then I could also potentially use my Blood Token here to discard. I think the extra land in place is still useful in case we want to activate Hive and Blitz Underdog. Picked up a Meeting Massacre, which can certainly come in handy. Opponent has a Skullport Merchant. And a Shambling Ghast. Plus another one. Okay. So now Meeting Massacre is looking good. can massacre for x equals 4 and then we'll be one mana short of blitzing underdog if i unleash skullport merchants i can take out the treasure token so they would probably sack a ghast in response using the merchant's ability so that's not too exciting could also just massacre for a smaller amount so we can still blitz although taking out merchant seems important so we'll do it for four So they can sack one gas to draw. And then I'm happy enough playing my land out. Since again we have all these mana sinks. Seven mana. Is it time for a planeswalker? It is, Soren. 
And they do have Confront to get him back, and an Involved Despair, that's gonna hurt. And now we don't have a treasure to take out with Unleash. So that happens. Takes out our Meat Hook Massacre, which otherwise could have represented a bit of damage. Okay, so can we somehow kill our opponent here? Doesn't seem like it. I can Smashing, taking out both Sorin and the Vampire, or we can Unleash, although it's just gonna take out one of the two, so that's not super exciting. So I guess Smashing for three, take out the Vampire, and then we can Blitz Underdog again. And that should probably go after Sorin. Although then they can confront. Yeah, that still seems like the play though. Fable's not bad. Field of Ruin can go after one hive, but they can also just keep it up to answer it once we animate it. So actually not a bad uh, play here. Uh, Soren makes another vampire. So plan is probably unleash the vampire and then we can fable, blitz underdog and uh, take out Soren once again. So might want to start with unleash. Could see a deadly dispute in response, we don't. I guess we'll be one mana short of blitzing underdog and playing Fable. So we could keep Soren in play for a turn, and then just play underdog and Fable. Is that better? Then another sweeper would be kind of annoying. I think we still blitz. And then we can play the other underdog instead of Fable. That works. Without me, we're all doomed. And then Field of Ruin is gonna go after Hive instead of waiting. Okay. So, in a pinch, we could always use our blood token here, but I'm probably gonna hang on to Fable. Can discard our Alanda at this point, I think. Massacre for two kills underdog. And we'll start draining us even more. So now we're getting to the point where the opponent's underdog is quite threatening, and we'll have to exile it with Hive. So we'll use our block token. Tracker's not bad. Alright, so Hive is getting activated. Opponent is at 7. So they're pretty close to that if we Blitz Underdog, but not quite. So I think the play is going to be Hive, and then probably play Tracker. And then we can also maybe sacrifice a Clue Token. Since Fable will make another token to grow the tracker. Opponent's got another underdog. Well, if they have removal, we're dead to Meat Hook Massacre. So we have to block. Otherwise, Massacre drains us. Opponent goes to three. Another Field of Ruin for Hive. But if we just blitz underdog, we might get there. Chariot also pretty decent. Opponent could of course have some instant speed removal at the ready, in which case we're not necessarily gonna kill them here. Probably no point in animating Hive. In fact, I should probably tap it. So if they blow it up, I still get maybe some use out of the mana. So yeah, let's blitz underdog. 
see if they have an answer. And then we can maybe play chariots. And our opponent explodes, alright, so close grindy game here against Mono Black. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand could use an extra land or two, but we do have double harvester early on, so we can handle most creature starts, and then can always play Valkia two mana if needed. Ideally curve harvester into Obnixilis. Opponent on a red deck with turn one Kumano. Land is good. So even though we might want to keep Harvester for casualty, could be fine to trade this for like a hasty adversary if it picks up an extra counter. It's gonna be a play with fire taking out Harvester instead. Okay, so now do we want to play Obnixilus without casualty? I don't think so. So I can Valky have a look, although I'm most likely still interested in trading for etching. Or we can play another Harvester and hope there's no second play with fire. Close call. Valky with the plan of maybe sacking it to Obnixilus next turn is also not a worst idea. So, yeah, interesting spots. I think we'll go for Valky, have a look. And our opponent is red-white and their hand's not particularly great. Knowing about Iganja is also helpful. So if we were to block, they could use Iganjo. Opponent picked up a Royal Eruption in the meantime. Alright. So now I'm probably fine using my Blood Token. And, uh... Yeah, it's interesting. Do we get rid of Valky or do we get rid of Unleash the Inferno? Valky could still be useful to take Cathar, but it's going to be a temporary measure since eventually they'll get it back if they find more removal. And also don't really want to sag Valky to Obnixilus at that point. But Omnixilus is also kind of weak against Cathar if they can exile the token, so would be more interested in just plussing. So there's a lot going on here. Unleash as an answer to Cathar would not be bad. Although we do need to find a green mana for that. And maybe we can just double spell Valky and Harvester next turn. Which doesn't require specifically a green source. Voltage Surge is also nice. So now maybe we go for Harvester. If they try and exile it, we have an answer without needing to take three. And our opponent's going to be tempted to run out Brutal Cathar since they don't have much else going on. Although keeping Voltage Search answered then eventually could also be worth it. So there's Brutal Cathar. We'll let it exile our creature so we get an extra blood token. And then the question is, do we want to trade for etching? Or do we want to keep Harvester around? Might want to keep Harvester again for casualty purposes. So I think we'll take two. And then... Yeah, probably attack and then... We can play out of Nixilis with casualty. And let's see here, this is the token. The token's more valuable, so that one we might want to plus, whereas we can minus the other one. In case we find Chariot to copy. And we can still maybe loot away Valky. Wouldn't has another Brutal Cathar, sadly. So that can exile our token. And next turn we have to worry about various creature lands as well. As our opponent takes out Omnixilus. Could have also potentially just made two devil tokens. But wanted to maybe start draining them a little bit. So Valky's not that useful anymore. That can go. Next time, I'll and then... Can play a tapped hive and probably make a token. And can loot away our mountain. We'll see if they activate den or cave here. It's 
it's going to be done. Now we have to be careful with etching. Because that means our devil doesn't actually die and doesn't get to deal one damage. So as much as I want to actually trade for den here maybe, might have to take out etching first so that the devil can actually trade. Otherwise it's just trading for a 1-1 one -one goblin. Yeah, I think that's the play. And then, yeah, we'll have to draw something useful, or we can just keep up Hive for next turn. Well, now, you've gone and ruined all my I might as well hang on to my blood token since we get the second chapter here to discard our lands. Spider Queen's a good draw. Also transforms to Knight, so they've got a 3-3 first strike now. Still gonna go for Spider Queen. Now Spider Queen doesn't line up great against the 1-1 Goblins from then, but first strike does mean we can maybe get loyalty on Spider Queen before we actually have damage dealt to her. It's gonna be an Aspirant, maybe putting counters on the Brute. Although then the Devil Token can finish off Aspirant, so it might be better off putting counter on itself. Okay, that's fine. So we can jump and trade and finish off Aspirants. Opponent could have used Iganjo, but that was fine by me. My will cannot be denied. Spider Queen back up to three loyalty. Aren't I generous? And initiate the play. So it does transform back today. Exiles my spider, sadly. So this Brutal Cathar is doing work. So I can cash in Spider Queen for two spiders. Or I can dig for a play so this doesn't transform back, which is probably better. Okay, now we can play Tracker at least. And then maybe Cycle Proving Ground. And then copying Tracker with Reflection is pretty cool too. Probably gonna lose Spider Queen to a flying cave here. Never mind. Both at Spider Queen. So they can use my Ganjo here. So how do we wanna approach this. Probably worth it to save Spider Queen and then just throw a Tracker in front of one of their creatures, make them use Iganjo, and then still have Reflection to provide additional advantage later. And then I'm fine cycling this. I guess we can wait. So sure, block like so. Does mean Brutal Cathar would transform back into Knight as well. But that doesn't change the equation here. So that happens. This happens. And the Meadook Massacre looks good. Although I kind of want to keep my reflection around. Start by drawing, I think. Voltage Surge. Could answer either a brute or a creature land. So do we give up on reflection? Probably do. Then we can wipe the board and have voltage surge to answer a creature land and then take over with our planeswalker. So let's attack for two firsts. And I think I'm fine playing out my land, that way we can maybe crack a clue if our opponent doesn't activate their creature land. Right, cave is animated. Might as well let it attack so they cannot float the mana. And then we'll sack our blood token over the clue token here to deal four. Alright, so now we're in the driver's seat. 
the late game should favor us, as we should have better top decks overall. Life total still quite high. Play Harvester, maybe sag the clue first. Probably did not want to tap my only green source there, but that's okay. Play Harvester. And I'm probably still okay running out my land. Happy to trade Harvester for Den. Worst case scenario would be Thundering Raiju as a 4-4 attacking here. So these can trade. And probably hang on to Smashing instead of discarding it with the Blood Token. Can make a fresh batch of spiders. And can either attack or cycle. Let's cycle. Can maybe still attack afterwards. Okay. Spider time. Now do I hang on to my land? It's probably okay. Actually want to exile their instants and sorceries here in case of adversary. So that was a mistake. Should go after a Royal Eruption and then play with fire. It's gonna be an Angel Fire Ignition, that's unexpected. Not a card you see in most Boros decks. Alright, so they get to trample over, finish off Spider Queen. And then now we'll go for the Ignition, I guess. Underdog's not bad either. So Hive, animated, probably happy to race. And play Underdog. And I'll hang on to my Blood Token and my land here. Most likely gonna activate it. Opponents at 6. Kumano's not going to save them. And a Crucible to make two hasty 1-1s. One Guess that helps against Menace, but we do have Smashing to clear some blockers. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Missing green mana for Chariot, but uh, turn 3 we can maybe use a Blood Token to keep digging and play another 2-drop. So we can look for the land to play Chariot. Opponent on a green deck and there's our green mana. So turn 2 against a green deck. I think I like Harvester, since we might need the removal early, prevent them from getting something like a pack leader going. Ranger class, pretty good too. Alright, do I want to attack with Harvester? Probably just keep it back and be fine with a trade. And then play Underdog, keep up red mana, represents a removal spell. And I guess trading Underdog for a wolf would be fine by me. It's going to be a troll on curve. So if I sag my blood token, Harvester doesn't really work as removal anymore. Plan is to play Chariot next turn, and then I guess we could double Underdog the turn after. Think I hang on to my blood token, but it's a close call. Right, another Harvester means we could take out Troll, although that does give the opponent a bit of a mana boost early. Think getting Chariot going first is better, and then we can maybe use the second Harvester to clear a path for Chariot to start copying our tokens. No Chariot for the opponent, just another old growth troll. Still pretty good. And a backup Chariot, so now I don't really mind if the first one trades off. So what's the plan? I guess start by crewing Chariots. And then just a Chariot attacks. Could also copy the Blood Token, but for now the Cat seems better against a green deck. 
Put on double blocks, that's fine. Now one card we don't want to see is the enchantment that doubles power and toughness. Although even then we can still use Harvester to take out Troll and mitigate the effectiveness of their enchantment. Opponent's got their own chariot now. It's only fair. Okay. Now our opponent did leave up one green mana, so they could easily have something like Snakeskin Veil. Although we drew another chariot, so I guess we can keep the party going. Don't think we're quite at the point yet where we want to attack with all our cats. Or do we? What would happen if we attack with everyone besides Harvester? So three cats, chariot and underdog. They could maybe try and block our chariots with their 4-4 and then use Veil to pump their creature. Or the other trick that makes them destructible. And then we can play another Harvester to maybe finish off a chariot. Or we can just play another chariot and then make that all-out attack next turn. Yeah, close call. With her opponent still at 20, I don't feel the need to get too aggressive. So let's try this. Opponent's fine trading for troll. Do they have a trick? They don't. Alright. And we'll play another Chariots, and then hopefully next turn we get a clean attack in. And we can start going wide. And since we're pretty far ahead on board, it's tricky for the opponent to attack with their Chariots, unless they maybe have the Sorcery to make a pair of 4-5 tokens, which would be quite strong here. It's going to be an Ulvenwald Oddity instead. Okay. Just Chariot attacking, so they might have a trick to give it like two plus one counters, which is a reason to at least triple block. And yeah, that seems okay, since whatever trick they have could also protect Oddity if I try and take it out with Harvester next turn. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Trade happens. And a pack leader. Alright, so they do have another profitable blocker here. So I might want to take out pack leader now instead. And then play underdog and another harvester. Gotta do this first. And then might as well crew chariots with harvester and underdog. And probably going to end up using the blood token. Although, that being said, we can use Harvester next turn with two blood tokens to take out an oddity. Put does trade for chariots. Once again. And falls to 10, so they're pretty far behind on board. Let's see if they can make a comeback. Okay, opponent has got a second chariot as well. That's fair. Okay, so if I try and take out Oddity with Harvester, they can just crew Chariot, they'll have three blockers. And then we can Blitz Underdog. And then our opponent would still be taking damage from five cat tokens and die. Although they do have Flare, which I guess they could technically turn into a 1-1 one -one Chum Blocker. Although at that point we just attack with a Harvester instead of using it. So at that point I'm fine just using the Blood Token to maybe find some more action. Could also animate Hive actually. Which may be better than Blitzing Underdog. Sure. I think that should do it. 
Although it's possible the math works out in such a way that the one extra point from Hive compared to a cat token doesn't matter. And I'm better off just blitzing to get an extra card, just in case her last card is something relevant. Alright, opponent is just gonna turn on Lair. But uh, X equals 2 means it's tapped, so not too helpful. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, close game against Mono Green, but Triple Chariots got the job done and got us two diamonds. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This hand is a little sketchy. No black mana. So we're not necessarily playing underdog on curve, and then we're pretty far from any of these expensive cards. This is a little bit better. And then I probably bottom Spider Queen and keep our castable cards. And underdog into Obnixilus is not a bad start. Let's see what the opponent is up to. Hopefully not an Angel's deck. Yeah, Jada does indeed have the Angel creature type, so Power Word Kill not going to be super useful. And they can also attack past our Devil Tokens here. So the plan's probably going to be to Massacre as soon as possible, but next turn the opponent's already going to make Angels with various plus one counters. So they're going to be out of range for Massacre, so we probably just lose here. We'll try this approach. And then I think we just plus twice since the plan is to Massacre anyway. Maybe next turn I can make a Devil, so Massacre, killing the Devil, can also help finish off a larger creature. Alright, Inspiring Overseer still dies to Massacre, so untap land would be ideal here. And our opponent should be attacking the Token Planeswalker, as we can copy that with a potential Chariot. Did not draw the land we needed, so cancel Massacre just to kill Jada, essentially, after making a 1-1 token, or I guess we can kill both if we give up on our copy of Obnixilus, which is kind of painful, but probably necessary. So we still have our Planeswalker in play, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can find some lands to set up a bigger Massacre next. Chariot would be awesome if we could cast it. For now, we'll plus play Underdog. Elspeth. Might minus here. Or they can plus to make sure they finish off Obnixilus, which also makes sense. No Alright, let's attack Elspeth, fine with the trade, and then play Chariots. And then we might end up blitzing Underdog here to keep up the pressure. Massacre for two wipes our board. Not a card you see in every Angel deck. At least we're not too worried about an Elspeth ultimate as we have another Massacre in hand. They're just gonna minus three instead, finding Righteous Valkyrie with a shield counter. So we want to set up another Massacre next turn. For now, we'll Blitz Underdog. Fine with an attack. And if they block with Valkyrie, they'll lose the shield counter at least. 
even though it doesn't help against Massacre. And I can play Tapped Hive now instead. Small advantage to drawing the card of Blitz first. So if Elspeth pluses on Valkyrie, won't be able to kill it with Massacre. Goes for Lifelink, and a backup Valkyrie is problematic. Opponent quickly getting to 27 or more, at which point her team will now get plus 4, plus 4. Okay, so could animate Hive go after Elspeth, although instant speed removal is going to punish that. Or we can go for Fable, which can help me hit the land drop to maybe set up a bigger massacre. Although very likely next turn their team will already get that plus 4, plus 4 bonus, and then it's basically game over. I can try cycling Proving Ground to find Voltage Surge to kill Valkyrie, sacking Chariot. Not a great play, but it might keep us alive. Yeah, that might be our best bet. Or we can Blitz Underdog, which also draws a card. And then if we draw the uh, Voltage Surge, we can still cast it, even without sacking Chariot if they blocked. And then I can play the land to maybe set up a bigger Massacre, we'll see. Opponent does block. Alright, need a Voltage Surge. There it is. Finish off Valkyrie, I think, over Elspeth which is also an option, since the plan is to massacre the board next turn anyway. But if they can play any Angel, even with three toughness, it would already trigger both Valkyries, plus I guess they get to attack with Valkyrie as well. So yeah, if I kill this Valkyrie, it's still not gonna solve my problems, as our opponent's still gonna plus two plus two their team next turn. So maybe I just have to hope they don't have any more Angels in hand, and then killing Elspeth is our best shots at coming back. And yeah, Massacre for 5 next turn with an untapped land might do it. But any Angel is basically game over. Another Elspeth will do that as well. I'm not looking for trouble, but I'll fight. Give another Valkyrie lifelink. And that's gonna get them up to 28, which is enough. Opponent went for Vigilance instead. So there's still a chance if we draw an untapped land. Oh, that's uh, too bad. Just a Valky. So I can Massacre for four, doesn't help. And now Blitzing Underdog is not really gonna accomplish much. So close, opponent almost played into our second Massacre. But we couldn't really draw the final land we needed. So I guess we'll have a look at their hand, see what else they were working with. But there's no way out here. Feels like they've got an instant vanishing verse, yep. Alright. GG's. So yeah, pretty much from the start we were in trouble. Managed to almost make a game out of it. But uh, yeah, the power word kill, not killing angels, does have its drawbacks. With Red White being so popular, not losing a life as opposed to Infernal Grasp is a big deal, but if you run into the few angel decks, you might regret it. GG's, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and our hand isn't particularly exciting, although we can always discard a copy of Valky to Fable and get us closer to Spider Queen, so I'll try it. And then a third land will go a long way. That'll help. So we're curving potentially Valky for up against Mono Green to take away a powerful creature. Voltage Surge, also an option to kill Sculptor to maybe delay Isika's Chariot, which otherwise we cannot take with Valky. So close call. I think I'm in favor of Valky. Hope they don't have Chariots and then. We can maybe use the uh, Voltage Surge at instant speed after making a treasure token with our Shaman. And that might work out better. And luckily no Chariots, they do have a Bankbuster. And we'll take one Troll. 
And turning Valky into a troll next turn is also an option. Although I think playing Fable is still better long term. Pack leader, so they're gonna double spell Bankbuster as well. And then next turn troll cruise Bankbuster, so Pack leader gets to attack. So we might want to leave Valky back to turn into troll so it can block Pack leader. I think that's okay. As opposed to playing Fable. Tapped Lair, so we have perfect information. So this should keep the pack leader at bay. Order maybe planning to pump with the pack leader. Which I guess would also work, but then they would waste their entire turn, still trade. I think that's a fine exchange. And we also get the troll enchantment here. All right, so that happens. Trade. And then, huh, what's happening here? Okay, I guess that's how that works. Valky triggers again as an enchantment. That's a strange interaction that I haven't seen before. But uh, yeah, I guess it comes back and then it triggers again. We've learned something new today. And now we can go for Spider Queen. So that seems fine. Is that better than Voltage Surge plus something else? Yeah, I think so. You could have such My will Get our defenses up. So now Troll is safely exiled underneath our Legendary Enchantment Aura. Their opponent has one unknown in hand. They might have drawn a trick. Otherwise I'm happy double blocking. Alright, that makes sense. They just want to take out Spider Queen. We'll just jump and trade. Keep Spider Queen around. And then can make a fresh batch of spiders. Now what happens if I play another Valky? Probably better off saving it for Tybalt anyway. So let's not find out. And then can make more spiders, play Fable, play Underdog. Or we can get Obnixilus going since they don't have any tramplers in play at the moment. And then play Underdog, sacrifice that to Casualty. And that will put more loyalty on Spider Queen, so we can make spiders as well if we'd like. Yeah, that works out nicely. And then the non-token can minus, the other one can start plussing now. Since a token we can copy with chariots, so it's more valuable to keep the loyalty high to make sure it sticks around longer. Opponents got their own chariots, speak of the devil. Although, one more land and we can cast Tybalt here and exile the chariot. Opponents attacking. And how do we want to block? We have 6 damage, so not quite enough to take out both, so what's more valuable here? I guess we can jump Bankbuster, block Mammoth and then finish off Mammoth, keep an extra spider token. There's our land for Tybalt's. And yeah, we should be in the driver's seat. Can make another devil. Plus. My goons will make quick work of you. Go ahead. Plead for mercy. 
Well, this enchantment certainly did a lot of work for us. And our opponent explodes. Four planeswalkers, too much for them to handle. Well, that was a very interesting rules interaction. So glad we got to catch it on camera here. And yeah, overall, I've been quite happy with this Junt midrange deck. As usual, midrange decks are going to be a little bit better in best of three compared to best of one, as you can sort of fine tune your deck to beat aggro decks by boarding in more life gain and cheap removal. And then against control, you can replace some of your dead removal spells with discard and other difficult to answer permanents. So, in general, I would recommend playing midrange in best of three. But as far as best of one goes, this build has quite a bit of flexibility with cards like Harvester being both a threat and a removal spell, and the same can be set for a few different cards in the deck, so it can play a lot of different roles and kind of pivot in the middle of a game. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.